Before there was man, there was the sea. Through the ages, he has watched the waves come from beyond the horizon and break upon the shore, marking the boundary which separated him from a world as strange and remote as a foreign planet. Today, with the advent of modern technology, man ventures into this alien and hostile environment to meet the challenge of survival. To this end, four brave men entered the waters of the Blue Caribbean and descended to a shelter huddled on the ocean floor. Here, completely isolated from the surface world, they would attempt to live and work for 60 days. It all began when the Navy, NASA, and the Interior Department scientists, joined by the General Electric Company, decided to create an undersea structure wherein men could live and work. Project manager was the Office of Naval Research. The habitat, a marvel of engineering, was designed on the basis of the Navy's earlier sea lab projects and space science experience a habitat complete with life support system, crew's living quarters, control room and laboratory, engine room, and a wet room open to the sea. The plan was to place the structure on the bottom of Greater Lamashire Bay and the Virgin Islands. In these waters, Four scientists would live and work for 60 days. The clear warm waters and abundant coral reefs support a varied fish population, providing an excellent opportunity for biological and oceanographic study. The arrival of the habitat and its surface support equipment marks the start of the underwater phase of the program. 50 feet below the surface, Navy CB divers using new underwater engineering equipment and techniques level the ocean floor for the habitat base. A standpipe is erected. Using this device, Seawater from different levels will be pumped into the habitat for salinity and plankton analysis. Way stations are lowered and placed in position. These bubble top cages will serve as communications and observation posts, as well as a place of refuge from sharks. With all preparations complete, the pressurized habitat is slowly winched downward and moored to the bottom by special anchor devices.
February 15th, 1969. Dignitaries arrive to observe the start of an experiment which will open new avenues to a better understanding of man and the sea. The aquanauts from the Department of the Interior, Richard Waller, Conrad Mankin, Dr. Edward Clifton, and John Vanderwalker, these are the men who will live and work beneath the sea for 60 days. As the starting ceremonies continue, Navy divers conduct one last check of the habitat. then rise to the surface with a key to the underwater abode. A symbolic key representing the future of underwater research. The key is passed to the aquanauts. And with one last look at the surface world, they plunge into the deep. Dark shapes propel themselves downward. Guided by the umbilical cables and hoses, which provide the habitat with life-giving air, water, and electrical power from the surface, they make their way to the twin-cylinder dwelling, which will be their home and laboratory for two full months. Daily, the aquanauts emerge into the open sea. Slowly, each man becomes accustomed to this new environment from which he cannot escape without lengthy decompression. They collect sand, coral, and sea bottom samples for the purpose of making a detailed geological map of the ocean floor. They capture and study lobsters. In order to follow their movements and migration patterns, small sonic transmitters are attached to their shells. Information on the habits of marine creatures will be invaluable for future fish farming and aquaculture projects. Many hours each day are spent in the water, but man has yet to acquire the physical capabilities of the fish, and the security of the habitat must be sought. Just as there is work to be done in the sea, so also is there work to be done in the habitat. The aquanauts constantly check the habitat's environmental system. They study rock and coral samples.
they report all observations and findings to the surface. Continuous communication with the habitat is vital, for information is the objective of this project. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration is conducting research on how men would perform while living in isolation for an extended period of time. The General Electric Company needs data on the habitat which only a practical test can provide. The Department of the Interior has a primary interest in methods of developing the marine resources of the ocean. And the Navy has a vital interest in defense and man's ability to live and work on the ocean floor. Days turn into weeks and weeks into months as the aquanaut scientists accumulate new knowledge. Knowledge which will one day help to provide much of the food and mineral resources for the world's population. Darkness marks the final hours of the Tektite project. The date is April 17th. A transfer capsule containing the Aquanauts breaks through the surface of Greater Lamisher Bay and is placed atop a decompression chamber. For the next 24 hours, the Aquanauts will be decompressed until their bodies are free of the special nitrogen-oxygen gas mixture which they have been breathing under the sea. History on smiling faces as the four underwater pioneers emerge into the world which they left 60 days before. They have ventured into the depths and returned, bringing with them new knowledge while successfully meeting the challenge of survival. They are the vanguard of many who will come to live and work in the sea. Man has again ventured into the depths and returned. And the sea, the eternal sea, has given up yet a few more of its closely held secrets. <laughs>